Hello. With the release of version 15.30 of PLS CAD, the program now has the capability to determine the optimum combination of body and leg extensions for lattice towers based on the ground surface or tin model. This feature is called Optimum Body and Leg Extension Selection. This new feature automates the task of finding the best combination of leg extensions to fit areas of unequal terrain. No more trial and error or using cumbersome spreadsheets to find the optimum combination of body and legs to fit the ground. In order to use the optimum body and leg extension selection feature in PLS CAD, the lattice towers must first be modeled using the tower program and must have the different body and leg extensions created using the family manager feature of tower. So before we dive into PLS CAD, let's first look at the necessary information needed for our lattice towers. Here I've opened up the BLE underscore example dot TOW lattice tower model which ships with the tower program. When I go to Model Family Manager, we can see that this model has many different body and leg extensions created. There are two different body extensions, one being 40 foot tall and the other being 20 foot tall. There are also towers built with no body extensions. The leg extensions come in 2.5 foot height increments, with 5 foot being the lowest height and 30 foot being the tallest height. If I click on the Table button, I can see that for this tower model, there have been 36 different configurations created using the various body and leg extensions. You'll notice that of these 36 different configurations, only three of them actually have differential leg extensions. The other 33 configurations all consist of four equal leg length extensions. To use the optimum body and leg extension selection feature in PLS CAD, it is not necessary to build all of the possible leg and body permutations in the family manager of tower. You just need to make sure each unique body extension and each unique leg extension is modeled. PLS CAD can build the necessary combinations for you automatically. There are two additional options in Family Manager which will be used in the Optimum Body and Leg Extension Selection feature. In the upper left hand corner of the Family Manager box, you can define a maximum differential leg height. This will limit the elevation difference between the shortest and tallest leg extensions in a tower model. This example tower has a value of 0 feet, which signifies no limit between the leg extensions. The second option in Family Manager is the naming convention. You can set the label when no body extension is present in the tower model and define separators to use between the model name and the first extension and another to use between subsequent leg extensions. Later on, if we tell the program to create new tower permutations, these settings will be used by tower for the structure file names. We will see how this works later when we run the optimum body and leg extension selection in PLS CAD. For more information on how to use the Family Manager feature of the Tower program, we have a separate video available on our website. Now that I've shown you the Family Manager setup in the Tower program, I'm going to open my PLS CAD project. This example project consists of two different types of Method 1 structures, also called stick structures. The non-dead-end structures have the exact same geometry as a lattice tower we just looked at in the tower program. The line also has dead-end structures at all of the large angle locations. To use the optimum body and leg extension selection feature in PLS CAD, you must have a tin model created for your project. This project has a tin model which we can see by going to the 3D view and going to Terrain, Tin, Display Options and selecting the Render Triangles box. Now the tin model is displayed in my 3D view. Now let's look at the optimum body and leg extension selection feature. You will find it at Structures, Automatic Spotting, Optimum Body and Leg Extension Selection. I'll click on it to open the dialog box. Now in this dialog box, we need to select the Parent Family Manager Tower Model that PLS CAD will use for the optimization. Pick the top button if your PLS CAD model contains lattice tower models, and PLS CAD will auto detect the Parent Family Manager model for each tower in your line. So if you have a line with different tower types, like say tangents, angles, and dead ends, you can run the command over the entire line and PLS CAD will use the appropriate tower model at each location. Pick the second button if your line contains stick structures, like this model. Then find the Parent Family Manager model that you want to use for the optimum selection. In my case, I need to navigate and find the BLE example.tow model that I was showing you a few minutes ago. Note that this model will be used for all structure locations, so if your line has a combination of tangents, angles, and dead ends, you will likely have to run the command several times in conjunction with the structure start and end range to apply the changes to each structure type. 
With the next two buttons, you select the range of body and leg extensions to be used in the optimization. I'm going to pick the second button to have Tower generate all possible permutations of body and leg extensions while respecting any limitation we set for the maximum leg extension differential back in the Family Manager box. Then in the next box we can select a directory folder where Tower will place all the Tower models used in the line after the optimization is complete. I will leave this box blank which means the new models will be placed in the folder where the parent Family Manager model resides. We can also select a range of structures for the optimization by selecting the starting and ending structure. In my case, I'll perform the optimization over the entire line. With the next two buttons, we can choose to have PLSCAD run the optimum selection and just create a report, or run the selection and modify the line. I typically just run the report for the first optimization so that I can confirm everything is working correctly based on the settings I have input. If not, then I make the necessary adjustments until I'm comfortable with the results. Then after that, I'm ready to have it actually modify the line. In the lower boxes here, we need to enter a range for the allowable reveal of the tower foundation joint relative to the TIN model. For my first optimization, I'll use a minimum value of 0 and a maximum value of 2 feet. In some cases, it may be acceptable to have the foundation joint below grade, in which case you would enter a negative value for the minimum reveal. We also need to enter a range for the allowable wire attachment movement. During the optimization, tower heights may need to be raised or lowered to find the optimum solution given the other input parameters. By defining the allowable attachment movement, you can limit the amount of the wire attachment vertical movement for a structure. In my first optimization here, I will use a minimum value of 0 feet and a maximum value of 2 feet. This way, I will be assured that the conductors on my new towers will be no closer to the ground than my, in my initial design. In the lowest section of the dialog box, there are settings that will apply if your towers are supported by grillage foundations. I'll skip over these settings for now and come back to them in a little bit. So at this point, I am ready to run the optimum body and leg extension selection for this line and see the results in a report. Here is the report with the results of the optimum body and leg extension selection. The optimum tower is defined as the minimum weight tower configuration for a specific location. The upper portion of the report lists the optimization parameters and several notes about the optimization feature. In the tabular section below are the results of the optimization. The table lists the new structure name, the height and weight along with the change of the wire attachment height, and any structure height adjustment that was applied. You'll note that all of the wire attachment height change values are between 0 and 2 feet. However, in several instances, there was a negative structure height adjustment applied to make the tower fit the terrain. This is the height adjustment that you will see in the structure modify box for each structure, but it is different than the wire attachment height change. The last four columns in the report list the foundation joint reveal for each of the four tower legs. All of these values fall within my input parameters of 0 to 2 feet, with one exception. Now some of the structures are colored in blue. In this case, the existing dead-end stick structures could not be replaced with tower models since the parent family manager model I selected did not have the same number and type of attachment sets as the dead-end structures. PLSCAD will only replace structures which have identical attachment sets. We can also see there is one structure colored in red. At structure number 30, the optimization could not find a body and leg extension combination that met the input requirements. In this case, the maximum reveal is greater than 2 foot for legs number 1 and 3. I could elect to rerun the optimization with a different minimum or maximum reveal or possibly a larger allowable wire attachment movement to find a solution for this structure. Now I'm going to close this report and I'm going to go back to the optimum body and leg extension selection. But this time I'm going to have PLSCAD create a report and modify the line. When I do this, I'm also going to check the box for PLSCAD to create structure cross-sections in the report. I'll leave the rest of the settings unchanged and rerun the analysis. Now another thing to know about the optimum selection feature is that when I select the option to modify the line, PLSCAD will make a copy of my current line and make all of the modifications in that new line. These lines can be viewed under the Lines Edit command in PLSCAD so you do not have to worry about the original line model being modified by PLSCAD when using the optimum body and leg extension selection command. All the changes will occur in the new line model. Now when we look at this new report, we can see it is essentially the same report with the same results that we saw previously. 
so I'll close the report and look at the 3D view. Now I can see that the stick structures have been replaced with the tower models with the optimum body and leg extensions. Now let me look closer at structure 30. I can quickly go to this structure by hitting the G key on my keyboard and selecting structure 30 from the pull down menu. I click the OK button and then I'm looking at structure 30. As I zoom in and rotate the 3D view, I can clearly see the differential legs at this location. Now if I go to lines edit, I can see that the line titled BLE example with stick structures original has been copied and is now the active line. This active line contains the modified line with the lattice tower models and the previous line in the list is the original line with the stick structures. Next I want to rerun the optimization but this time assume that I have grillage foundations for my towers. So let's go back to the optimal body and leg extension selection settings. Now the purpose of the grillage foundation settings is to ensure that the top of the grillage base is set a certain distance below the tin. In the bottom of the dialog box, you can enter the length of the grillage stub angle. This is the length from the tower foundation joint, or in other words the bottom of the leg extension, to the center top of the grillage base. The distance is measured along the true 3D slope of the tower leg. PLS CAD then calculates the minimum grillage setting depth as the straight vertical projection of the stub angle length. Now for this optimization I'll use a value of 10 feet. Now once I've input the grillage stub angle length I have the option to enter a grillage reveal. This reveal is measured from the top of the grillage setting depth to the tin. The grillage reveal in conjunction with the stub angle length can be used to define a minimum grillage embedment. For this example Let's say that we, re we require the center top of the grillage to be at least 8 feet below grade. Since our grillage setting depth is essentially 10 feet, I can enter a grillage reveal of 2 feet in the box. This means that the 10 foot setting depth is allowed to stick up a maximum of 2 feet above the tin surface. So in effect, I will have at least an 8 foot embedment depth for the bottom of the grillage. The PLSCAD user manual provides several sketches which illustrate these grillage foundation setting parameters. Finally, I'll assume that my foundation joint could be located below grade, so I'll change the minimum foundation reveal to negative one foot, and I'll also have PLSCAD auto detect my parent family manager model since I already have tower models spotted on my line. Now I'll click OK and run the body and leg extension optimization. Now this report looks very similar to the previous reports we've looked at. However, we can see there are four new columns to the right which list the grillage reveal. We should expect to see that none of these values are greater than the two foot limit that I input earlier. This appears to be the case except for structures 30 and 49 which are noted in red. PLSCAD could not find a solution that met all of the parameters I input and I can see that the leg reveal and grillage reveal are out of range on leg number 3 of structure 30 and the grillage reveal is out of range on legs 1 and 2 of structure 49. So I would have to revise the input parameters in some fashion to find an optimum solution at these locations. Now when I close the report I can see in the 3D view the markers which indicate the stub angle length shown by the sloped line and the grillage embedment depth shown by the vertical line. On three of the legs at structure 30 you can see where the grillage embedment depth sticks above the ground tin. In our case, this was allowed up to a maximum reveal of two feet. These markers provide a graphical aid when evaluating towers with grillage foundations. Now one last comment on this feature is that if you have PLS CAD modify the line with new towers, you must rerun all of your structure, wire, and various line design checks. Any changes made to the wire attachment heights during the optimization will influence the wire tensions and therefore will affect other design aspects like structure strength, clearances, swing angles, uplift, etc. Now for more information about our software, including additional videos and technical notes, please visit our website at www.powline.com. For inquiries regarding our software, price quotations, technical support, or any other information, please send us an email using the addresses on the screen. Now, thank you for watching this video.